question says, you will make a road trip from Orlando to New York. To help planning, you wrote the function d of t equals 70 t to calculate travel distance based on the driving time. After driving four hours, which city you uh, we will be at? You're going to be stuck in Orlando, zero miles, or you're going to be in Jacksonville, it's about, uh, and you have the mileage, okay? What you're going to do here is calculate the mileage, and then you're going to find the city. The Jacksonville was 141 miles, or Savannah, 280 miles, Fayetteville, 533 miles, Richmond, 738 miles, Washington DC, 146 miles, or you reach New York. I don't think so, right? New York is too far away. But anyways, uh, this is a warm-up. Uh, quick question. Does anyone... Kalia, good morning again. Does anyone need uh, yesterday's quiz? I will show real quick. If you, if you need, if you want, take a picture. Kalia, okay, you can take a picture. I am also... I think I'm gonna also uh, later I'm going to put a recording, a video with uh, everything uh, of this class available. Uh, all the, the quiz that we're going to work are going to be available on video. So you'll have plenty of uh, resources, plenty of uh, help to, to complete the test tomorrow. Okay, this is the quiz. Take a picture, take a screenshot. And uh, this is only half of the answers. I think you can figure out the other half. That's not so difficult. Okay, moving on. Oops. What's this? No, I don't want this. So let me close this window. I don't know why it's open. No, thanks. <laughs> Okay, moving on. Now, what's going to be the answer for this? Type your guesses. Part of the quiz, letter A. Determine if uh, negative 4 and negative 1 is a solution to y equals negative 1 over 2x minus 3. Do you remember how we solve this? Remember that uh, negative 4 is x, negative 1 is y. And we have an equation. We have this equation here that uh, we are asking. This is one of the first things we have worked on chapter two. One of the first kind of questions. To solve it, what you need to do here is, you're gonna plug in. Plug in x equals negative four and y equals negative one, okay? Plug in into the equation. So y equals negative one is negative one equals negative 1 over 2, okay, and x equals negative 4, so substitute and plug in here, negative 4, this is y, this is x, minus what, minus 3. Now try to do the calculation and check if you're going to find a true statement, check if you're going to find uh, negative 1 equals negative 1, okay, if you find negative 1 equals negative 1, this is true. This is a true statement. That means, yes, this is a solution. Yes, it is a solution to the equation. If you find something different, if you find negative 1 equals 0, negative 1 equals, let's say, 5, or something like that, this is a false statement. That means, no, it's not a solution. Okay? In this case, in this situation that we have here, if you do all the calculations, you're going to find negative 1 equals, equals negative 1. That means, yes, this is going to be a solution to the equation. Right? And boom! <laughs> Let's uh, uh, check letter B. This is letter A. Let's check letter B. Letter B is the line, uh, find the slope of the line given the following information. 
for letter B, the line passes through the points 7 and 4 and 11 and 8. So 7 and 4, X and Y, 11 and 8, X and Y. This is point 1, this is point 2. Okay? Point 2. And we will need a formula. We need a formula to calculate M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. We're going to need to apply this formula. Do you remember? And applying the formula, we will find Y2. Y2 is 8. Y1, 4 over x2 11 x1 7 oops 7 work out this uh, calculation here 8 minus 4 equals 4 divided by 11 minus 7 another 4 4 divided by 4 type here your answer this is going to be your answer 4 divided by 4 you know how to calculate 4 divided by 4 right so, this is going to be the answer for this question. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going unless you give me any feedback, any questions here in the chat. Should I keep going? Let us see. Uh, again, find the slope. The line is given by 6x minus y equals 1. And to find the slope of this equation, you need to rearrange or you need to change a little bit the equation and make it look like the slope intercept form. The slope intercept form is this one here y equals mx plus b. Because you know that this, num that this number here, m, is the slope and b is the y intercept. We are looking at, uh, we're trying to find the slope. So let's rearrange, let's change a little bit this equation. This equation is actually equal to. If we change and apply addition property, we can uh, actually find y equals 6x minus 1, okay? This is the equation. That means m equals 6, and m is the slope, so the answer is 6. The answer here is 6. Let us see. Okay? May I keep uh, going, or if you want uh, any explanation, let me know, type here in the chat. I'm gonna go on. Letter D. Letter D now. Find the slope of a line parallel to the given line. And the given line is this one. If the slope of a line is negative seven, then find the slope of a line parallel to this one. The lines that are parallel, they have the same slope. So parallel lines have the same slope. That means uh, the value of the slope here, if the line is parallel, is going to be the same. It's going to be equal. It's going to be negative 7. Now, next question. Find the slope of a line perpendicular to the given line. If the lines are perpendicular, not parallel now, now they're perpendicular, then you're going to multiply the slope of one and the slope of the other one, and you're going to find negative one. If they are perpendicular, you multiply the slopes and you find, you, you're always going to find negative one. That means the slope of this line here that's perpendicular to uh, the slope negative seven is one over seven. Because if you multiply 1 over 7, you multiply by negative 7, you have negative 1, right? 1 over 7, multiply by negative 7, negative 1. So this is the answer for letter E. Moving on, can I work uh, B? F, I mean F. Can I work F? The last... The last question of this uh, first part, letter F, given the equation negative 3x plus y equals 4, 
write the line in slope-intercept form. Again, remember, slope-intercept form is this one. Y equals mx plus b. Okay? So let's uh, rewrite this equation using the slope-intercept form. To do this, we need to apply additional property. We need to make some changes, modify a little bit, and find an equivalent equation. The equivalent equation that, have the, that uh, is in the slope-intercept form here is going to be, you can add, add to both sides 3x. If you add 3x on both sides of the equation, you're going to have y equals 3x plus 4. If you add 3x on both sides, additional property, and this is the, actually the answer. This is the slope intercept form, y equals 3x plus 4. And on the first part, any questions about the first part? Can we move to the second? Any questions at all about the first part? Can we move to the second part? Let me just check something here, and then we move to the second part. I'm not, I'm not having any feedback from you. I just uh, want to know if you're following, if uh, uh, I'm going too fast or I'm going too slow, or if it's good, the pace is good. Let me know, because if I don't see any feedback, I get worried. I think uh, you're not getting, you're not... Uh... All right, moving uh, to the second part, write the answers in slope-intercept form. So we're asking here about slope-intercept form. Remember, slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. This is the slope and the intercept, okay, the, the y-intercept. So we will write in the slope intercept form, this form, letter G, write an equation of the line that passes through the point, zero and negative one over two. This is actually Y intercept. See, if X equals zero, that means this is the Y intercept. A negative one over two is B. B equals negative one over two. And the slope is negative 2, that means m equals negative 2. The equation is going to be y equals m, negative 2, times uh, x, times x, plus b. And b is negative 1 over 2, minus 1 over 2. That's it. That's the that's the equation. That's the equation we're looking for in the slope-intercept form for letter G. Okay, so let me erase this. This is B, this is M, then you have the equation. For H, letter H, write an equation of a line containing the point x equals 0, y equals negative 3, Again, this is uh, 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 y-intercept, and negative, negative 3 is b. And it's parallel to y equals 6x plus 7. If the lines are parallel, they have the same slope. That means the slope is going to be equal to 6. The equation of this line, I'm going to write down here. This is g, and now I will write down um, h, h. Y equals M is at 6 times X and B negative 3. This is for H. Right? For H, if uh, Y equals 6X minus 3. Next question. Next question. Jack sells used cars. He is paid $800 per month plus $300 commission for each car he sells. R uh, letter I. Write an equation that represents Jack's monthly earnings. Why? In terms of the number of cars he sells. Let's write the equation. Let's, let's actually write it down here. 
Y is the earnings, the monthly earnings, gonna re be represented by the variable Y, equals 300 is the uh, amount he's, he makes every time he sells a car, right? So we're gonna multiply this by the number of cars he sells, X, and 800 is a one-time payment, the salary, one-time payment every month. So he makes 800 plus 300 for each car he sells. This is going to be the equation that represents his monthly earnings. Okay, this is I, letter I. For letter J, how much will Jack earn in a month if he sells 17? 17 automobiles. I'm going to plug in 17 here. Y equals 300 times 17 plus 800. That's it. And then type in your calculator. I think the number here is going to be 5,900. That, uh, that one you have to check out in your calculator. This is letter G. I think it's 5,900. If you want, you can type in a calculator. And uh, <laughs> that's a good job, right? It's making a lot of money. But you have to sell lots, lots of cars. You have to work a lot, sell lots of cars. And if you don't sell any cars, you're going to make $800. But actually, if you don't sell any cars, I think uh, uh, a salesman that, that don't sell any cars is going to lose the, the job, right? Okay, moving on, moving on. That's a good, good uh, comment, Ivo. Good comment. Next, the questions here. Write the domain. Remember this. Uh, uh, we cannot have, if I have a denominator, and this is the denominator, x plus 7, this needs to be different from 0. Remember? We cannot have a 0 on the denominator. And here, if you have a, a square root, this cannot be a negative number. It needs to be greater or equal than zero. It needs to be zero or positive. And uh, for that reason, we need to restrict, we need to change the domain. So let's check for K. I'm gonna write, I'm gonna work the answer here on the bottom. Write down on the bottom here. K. You need to have k plus 7 different from 0. That means k, uh, x, I mean, x different from negative 7. x different from negative 7. The way you're going to exclude, you're going to exclude negative 7 from the domain using interval notation is like that. Negative infinity, blank, united with blank, infinity and here on the blank you write down the number that you want to exclude we want to exclude negative seven right we want to exclude negative seven so this is the answer remember tomorrow tomorrow you're probably gonna have a different um, a different number so instead of negative seven you're gonna use a different number because tomorrow on the test I'm gonna change. I'm gonna just change slightly, a little bit, a few numbers. You you use the same templates, the same format, and you're gonna uh, just change the number that you want to exclude. What about letter L? And for letter L, we want uh, x plus seven. Let's write le letter L here. L. X plus 7 greater or equal than 0. That means X greater or equal than negative 7. The way you're going to write this on the domain is bracket negative 7 comma infinity Bra uh, parenthesis. This is how you're going to answer letter L. And finally, M for this domain thing. M doesn't have any denominator, 
M doesn't have any square roots. M doesn't have any restriction at all. If there are no restrictions, the domain is from infinity, negative infinity to infinity. The whole thing, the whole domain, you don't have any restrictions. You don't need to exclude any number. Okay? This is going to be the domain, the whole thing from negative infinity to infinity. And letter N. Here on N, you have to plug in into the equation x equals negative 2. So the equation is r of x equals x squared minus 2x plus 1. Plug in here uh, negative 2, then you're going to have negative 2 squared minus 2 times negative 2 plus 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 plus 4 plus 1. 4 plus 4 plus 1. This is equals 9. The answer here is going to be 9. Next one. Next one is even easier because, have a look, it's 0. x equals 0. Plugging 0 into the, the function. 0 squared is 0, minus 2 times 0, 0, plus 1. 0 plus 0 plus 1, 1. And the last question, letter P. Okay, now letter P. R of 3, so x equals 3. Plug in 3, literally 1. Yeah. Plug in 3 into the equation. 3 squared is 9, minus 2 times 3, minus 2, 2 times 3, 6, 9 minus 6, 3, 3 plus 1, this one is equals to 4, okay, so now we find, uh, we, we finish N, O, and P. Last uh, on this part. Then we're going to go to the last part, last on this part, Q, R, S, and T. And uh, you might remember this one, you might remember because we work it this week. It's to identify if it's a constant, a linear, a quadratic, or other kind of function. Check out the first one. The first one have a x squared. If you can find x squared, this is a quadratic quadratic function. Check R. R uh, doesn't have any exponent. Check the variable doesn't have any exponent. So this is going to be linear. If you don't find any exponent, it's linear function. Check S. S, you don't have here any variables at all. You just have a number. If you don't have any variables and just have a number, it's a constant function. And finally, this is a special function where the variable is on the denominator. This function is called reciprocal. It's not quadratic, it's not linear, it's not constant. That means it's other kind of function. Okay? So we finished uh, second part. Now we can move to the last part. If you don't have any questions for this part, if you have any questions at all, let me know. If you don't have questions, we can move to the last part. And I'm um, tracking uh, the time. I'm tracking the time. The time is good. We still have a, a little bit more than 10 minutes. And see, you can, we can work the whole quiz, the whole test tomorrow in just one period. Yes, the first part. Let me show the first part. The first part is here. The first part is here. You can take a screenshot. Um, uh, now we are here on letter U. 
letters U, V, W, X, and Y, you're gonna need this graph here. You're gonna need to look at the graph. Just again, remember, you're gonna have slightly different numbers tomorrow. Just don't, uh, don't use the same numbers. Just follow the, the same step-by-step, -step, the same method, the same thinking. But don't uh, check if you don't have a different numbers. You're gonna have different numbers tomorrow. Just slightly different numbers. Not all the numbers are gonna be different. And uh, starting with uh, f, f of four, this means x equals four, right? So you go to the graph, find x equals four. X equals four is here on the x-axis. Uh, intersect with the graph. You've got this point, and go to the y-axis to find what's the value of f of four. And the value of f of four is this: is f of four equals two. This is the answer. F of four equals two. V, now let's check V. Domain. Domain is always on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis. And the domain is going to start here. And this is an open dot. Open dot. And go all the way and the, to here. This is a closed dot. To the closed dot here on 7. So the domain is from negative 1 with a parenthesis because it's an open dot to 7 with a bracket because the closed dots okay okay now we have the domain next uh, let me write the domain here as well negative 1 7 next is the range the range of F and the range is on the uh, Y axis, on the vertical axis. The range starts here with a closed dot on negative one, all the way up here with an open dot on four. This is going to be the range. And the range is open dot, negative one, parenthesis, to a, uh, 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 I mean, wrong. Close the dot, close the dot in negative one, bracket, to an open dot in four, parentheses. Okay. So bracket, negative one, to four. And next is to find the y-intercept. Go to the y-axis, find where the y-axis is intersecting the graph or where the graph is intersecting the y-axis, the, the x, I mean x, this is the x-intercept, x-intercept. Go to the x-axis, and then you're gonna find the point here, where the graph, the blue graph, is intersecting the x-axis. This is the x-intercept. And uh, the last one from the graph is this. For what values of x is f of x? Yeah, 6. I forgot to write down 6. Sorry. That's right. It will. 6. Thank you. And the, the last one from the graph is uh, asking here. For what values of x is f of x equals negative 1? f of x negative 1 is this one, is, is down here. This is f of x equals negative 1. So negative 1, negative 1. Draw a, a horizontal line and check where this horizontal line intersects the graph. Intersects here. That means we are looking for, we are, we are talking about x equals 7. So if uh, x uh, if uh, f of x equals negative 1, this is going to intersect the graph here, where the x equals, is going to be equals to 7.
Almost uh, finishing, just one last uh, question that's still missing. And we cover the whole alphabet. Now we are on letter Z. Letter Z is about this, uh, this, um, this question, this situation, this uh, real life uh, application of a function. The function defined by S of t equals 1.6t plus 36 approximates the per capita consumption of soft drinks in the United States since 1985. The values of x, S, T are measured in gallons and T equals zero corresponds to the year 1985. Okay, so 1985 is year zero. Evaluate the per capita consumption of soft drinks in 1995. And you have to, to find T. What's going to be T? Because T equals zero is 1985. In 1995, it's going to be 10 years later, right? 10 years later. 1995 minus 1985, 10. That means T equals 10. Plug in 10 into the function, S of 10, which is going to be equal to 1.6 times 10 plus 36. 1.6 times 10 plus 36. Get your calculator. Type here this operation. Type in your calculator your operation. 1.6 times 10, 16 plus 36. And you're going to find the answer for letter Z. Uh, no Anjali is close, close, close. I think it's going to be 52, 52, okay? Check on your calculator. I think it's going to be 52. And that, that's it. We covered the whole quiz. Yeah. That's right. Great. Thank you. We covered the whole quiz and we still have a couple of minutes left.